Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. As we kick off a new week, our first segment involves an array of animals and artifacts, as well as tools, shells, and fossils. We're headed to a Victorian building in St. Johnsbury, which houses more than 175,000 objects and the state's only public planetarium. It's more than a museum of natural history. It's a place to marvel at the wonders of the world. Rebecca Gollin tells us about the life and legacy of Franklin Fairbanks. Located in the heart of downtown St. Johnsbury is the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium. Founded in 1889 to display the eclectic collection of local industrialist Franklin Fairbanks, the museum's focus is natural history. Franklin Fairbanks himself was a collector, and he was an amateur naturalist. He loved um, exploring and understanding nature, so he collected everything from rocks and minerals to um, bird specimens to eggs. Fairbanks was the nephew of one of the inventors of the Fairbanks scale, which was produced in St. Johnsbury. He inherited a fortune, as well as an interest in philanthropy. Establishing the museum was one way to share his love of learning and nature. He also did things like he kept meticulous uh, weather records. He recorded temperatures and um, wind speed and made observations about things like when strawberries were um, uh, growing in his field. Um, so he was, he was a great observer. Built in the Victorian style that was popular in the late 1800s, the building is listed on the National Historic Register. The collection inside also reflects the Victorian era in which most of it was gathered. The core collections are full habitat dioramas of animals in the wild, so you can see them up close. The taxidermist, William Balsh, did a absolutely brilliant job um, placing those animals in family situations, so you might see how, what they eat, how they communicate, how they take care of each other, what their nests look like. For example, in one of his earliest dioramas, like, um, flamingos, uh, there's an egg, and then juvenile, and then a, an adult, and a, um, an aging flamingo, all in the same grouping, and it's really a chance to see them all together. The intention was to widen the horizons for museum visitors by giving them a chance to see these wonders from far away. Along with the objects and artifacts on display, the museum also houses cultural items from around the world. The items that were brought here were picked up by the Fairbanks family or by representatives of the scale company when they traveled around the world. Um, there's an alcove dedicated to Egypt. There's one uh, with items from different parts of Europe. There are um, items from um, islands in the Pacific. And they're, they're not complete representations of any one part of the world, but they're pieces that were picked up by, by uh, very uh, specific travel, and um, they represent what was interesting at the time. Nearby is a series of artworks whose medium is one of the most unusual you'll find anywhere, representing the Victorian fascination with animals, shapes, and collecting. These images require viewers to take a closer look. We have these lovely mosaics that were um, put together by a man named John Hampson. And then I asked people to get up close and sort of take a look and, and see if they can tell me what they're made of. And usually after about 10 seconds, um, you'll get a response. And that response is because these mosaics are actually made by um, pinning thousands and thousands of beetles and moths on a surface in patterns and designs that were pleasing to the artist who made them. That's right. This is bug art, and the Fairbanks owns the entire collection. Along with the emphasis on the natural world around us, the museum encourages visitors to look up. The Fairbanks has a team of meteorologists on site and is home to the only planetarium in the state. There are things that happen in the sky that, well, I guess maybe it just surprises people if they haven't necessarily noticed it before. 
Mark Breen is one of the meteorologists at the Fairbanks. Oh, it's cold. He also serves as a tour guide to the cosmos for the planetarium's visitors. It's such a genuine experience. I mean, you know, you're describing about this particular constellation that you'll see this evening at 7 o'clock, or this is, you know, certain planets are out tonight, or uh, the moon's going to be moving through a certain, you know, constellation or next to a planet. Breen says that keeping track of Vermont's complicated weather is a unique challenge. Sometimes people ask me, is, is there really such a thing as Vermont weather? You know, is it, is it different than, you know, New Hampshire weather or something like that? And uh, really the key thing about our weather and what I find, I think keeps it fascinating for me, I mean, I've been doing this for 35 years, is that our mountains and valleys and, and how they're arranged and how weather systems come up along the coastline or they come out of Canada or off the Great Lakes, all of those different things kind of create unique weather really just from one spot to the other. It, it, you, I wouldn't even say from one town to the other because within the same town um, there'll be a situation where it's sunny in one place and it's snowing like crazy in another and, or in the summer you'll be a thunderstorm and it only hits one spot and not another. The Fairbanks has educational programs for students of all ages as well as their own nature-based preschool. One of the um, best kept secrets of this museum is that it is an active teaching museum. So we have partnerships with the schools in this area and we have a really phenomenal team of educators that go and um, they work with teachers and students throughout the year. Students in kindergarten through eighth grade get delivering science classes. It's a chance for visitors to explore the natural world from the smallest bugs to the largest planets. Whenever I come here, I find something new, and I've been here many years now. <laughs> but there's still things that I hadn't seen before and things to discover. Bringing the wonders of the world to Vermont's Northeast Kingdom. The Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium invites guests to begin their journey of discovery right here in St. Johnsbury. I'm Rebecca Gollan with Across the Fence. The Fairbanks Museum is open every day from 9 to 5. Discounted admission is available for schools and groups, and there's a special pricing for families. In Vermont, there are no military bases, but there are more than 2,000 children who have a parent serving in the military. With no actual base, military children can be invisible to educators, coaches, and the broader community. To help overcome isolation, the Vermont National Guard operates the Family Readiness Center. Keith Silva has our story. As a senior at Thetford Academy, Gabriel Gates fits in with the other young men and women training for the spring sports season. With one exception, his dad serves in the military. Just about everything I can remember is him in the military. The first day I was dropped off at kindergarten, my dad was in full uniform and went up to Burlington as soon as he dropped me off and flew to Tucson, Arizona to do Border Patrol in 2006. It's just been a a part of everything. Gabe's dad, Sergeant Joshua Gates, served on two year-long overseas deployments, which meant Gabe had to confront some big issues when he was young. It kind of forces you to grow up and forces you to look at things like, um, yeah, he's at work, but work could lead to something bad and that he could not come back. You have to think about things from an age that's younger than most that understand the concept of those things. Then and now, most of Gabe's friends don't understand what it's like to have a parent who serves in the military. When you're talking to your friend, you're like, yeah, my dad's gone. And they'll be like, yeah, my dad's gone too. He, my parents divorced. So I see him every other weekend, something like that. But it's not the same at all, obviously. Vermont is one of eight U.S. states, territories, and districts without a military base. For the approximately 2,300 military dependents living in Vermont, that can feel isolating. The Vermont National Guard Family Readiness Center at Camp Johnson in Colchester helps combat that isolation. Volunteerism is super important to, mm -hmm. to us as a population. Brian Stoudnauer is the lead child and youth program coordinator yeah, the with the Vermont yeah. National Guard. Their mom or dad signed up for the military. They did not. 
And so they were brought into this world being, being military dependent. And the challenges and struggles that they go through as an individual are gonna be more than a typical teenager, than a typical youth. And so it's super important to have programs and services for them to support them in their times of need. Try Northwest. Stoudenauer runs camps during school vacations and in the summer, like this drone camp that was held in partnership with UVM Extension 4-H. These events build lifelong friendships for these kids. They have a network of peers, actual military youth peers, um, that they connect to. And it's really great because we bring these kiddos back around school vacation times, around school breaks. We do periodic weekend programming as well. And when these kiddos come back together, it's amazing to see them just get right back into it. Just sets them all at ease and allows them to talk about the issues that are present for them being in military dependent youth. Gabe serves on the Vermont National Guard Teen Council, which helps Stoudenauer plan the camps and events for the Child Youth Program. As a veteran of this program, he appreciates what is done for him, his family, and other military families in Vermont. Almost always when I'm at these programs, I'm with one of the friends that I've known for probably 10 years now. And we're still friends and we talk and we hang out outside of camps and uh, Child Youth Program programs. And it's a big help and it sounds kind of cheesy, like, oh, find somebody to talk about it with, but it definitely does help. And those connections, even if you're not necessarily talking about your parent being deployed, you can look at each other and be like, yeah, man, it sucks, but it's okay. Set, go. Gates' experience of taking on a leadership role in the Guard's child and youth programs echoes the service by another member of the Gates family. It's just hap where I happen to end up and it's hard at times, but it's, it's just someone needs to do it, and my dad happens to be the one that raised his hand. Standing out by standing up. That's the life of a military kid. In Thetford, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. To learn about upcoming programs and other opportunities for Vermont's military kids, check the website ngfamily.vt.gov or call the Guard's Family Programs toll-free at 888-607-8773. Again, that's 888-607-8773. And that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.